Well, good day everyone. It's Graham and Jess from Great Off-Road Adventures. And in today's video, we want to talk to you about the Motop rooftop tent. spectacular campsites on the most remote of tracks to the workshop and everything in between. Your next episode of Great Off-Road Adventures is just seconds away. So how long we had the tent for Jess? Uh, just over 12 months I think. We, we got it during COVID so yep. about 12 months. Pretty much 12 months we've had it and we were doing the mats in the car the other day we're coming up to the end of our Gibber River Road trip now, so we'll be close to 50 nights of camping in this rooftop tent, with the biggest block being the one we're on now, which is 30 nights continuous, and we've actually still got another week and a half to go, so it's gonna be more like um, 40 nights plus by the time we get to the end of the trip, yeah, so continuously camping from the tent and the car. Yeah. One of our biggest trips yet, so... Um, no, the biggest trip yet. <laughs> the biggest trip. Yeah, all right. So uh, we've broken down the video into segments and I'm going to put them in chapters down the bottom so you'll be able to skip forwards and whatnot if you wish. Uh, we'll start with the basic specifications of the tent, then we'll cover the setting up, the packing up, our thoughts on the tent, and then what changes and bits and pieces we've made to make it better for us. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get stuck straight into the video. All right, so specifications for the Motop rooftop tent. Uh, they offer two different sizes, 120 um, centimeters wide and 135 centimeters wide. We elected to go for the 135 centimeters wide tent. Um, and because ours is 12 months old, it was at the time brand new, it was the version two and it was um, 205 centimeters long. Uh, subsequently, they've made them slightly longer, so for the six foot and over people, it's a little bit easier to fit into them, or more comfortable, I should say. I'm bang on six foot, and I fit in this tent just, just fine, just. The Motop, I, if I'm correct here, it's 57 kilograms. Um, without the ladder so and then the, uh, the ladder is additional so if you keep the ladder in the tent it weighs more if you like us and keep it outside the tent then it weighs slightly less but yeah so 57 kilos um, and it's only 160 centimeters tall should have included that with the, um, the length and width dimensions yep 135 wide 205 centimeters long and 16 centimeters tall so it is as far as I'm aware uh, the skinniest rooftop tent on the market and that has its pros and cons and we'll touch on that later on Yeah, so the price when we purchased it was $2,990 plus freight of a couple hundred dollars. I think it was 199 freight So, so yeah, so roughly 3,200 200 for the setup. Yeah again um, We paid full retail price. We have absolutely no affiliation with Motop we did our research, decided this looked like a good option for us and paid full price accordingly. Being that, we could then make a review saying it was no good, but I'm not making a review saying it's no good. I'm saying I'm making a review saying it's actually really good. So, so yeah. Um, yep. and, and it's um, not fiberglass or anything. It is uh, aluminium. aluminium. Yep. So. so nice and strong. So, yeah, so that's the basic overall specifications yes yeah, specifications and design of the rooftop there's no gadgets no lighting no power no just simple. it's literally a tent and mattress yep. so and a ladder which if you're into simple things it's great for and then you can make your own refinements as you go and again we'll touch on that when we talk about our modifications at the end so that covers basic specifications let's get into setting up the motop 
All right, so in terms of setting up the MoTop, I'm gonna use a real scientific device called a stopwatch on my phone, and we're gonna time how long it takes to set up the MoTop. So starting now, let's get into it. So it's pretty simple, two latches for the tent, an addition we've made is the third latch, but we'll talk about that later. And then two upright poles to put the uh, awning out, or annex out. And that's it, job done. 52, call it 53 seconds. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward. I'll touch on the modifications later on, but uh, at this stage we will open, we would open the air mattress. Um, but again, we'll talk about that when you talk about the mods to the tent. So yeah, setting up pretty quick, pretty straightforward. And uh, that's what makes life easy for us. All right, so for packing up the rooftop tent, it's just like setting it up but in reverse. So I'll quickly apologize. Deepor are just doing some whippersnippering and making some noise. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but I'm sure my microphone will still be able to hear me. So let's time the packing up of the rooftop tent, starting now. So packing up's done from the back, just like setting it up. Pull your two poles out. Then it's all in the prep work, provided you have prep the inside of the tent correctly and brought your sleeping bags in away from the edge, that sort of thing, it makes packing up a whole lot easier. So get the elastic up, yeah, I'll get there. Get that bit of the awning across, just makes life easier. If you didn't realize it already, I'm a little bit OCD, so I like things neat and tidy. Put the poles in, peel the roof down, get it 90% of the way down to about here. And now is where your prep work makes your life easier. You've got to get your sides in. So that they don't come out of the seal. Get one side in. Get the other side in, and this is where I was saying, fit different latches because you don't have to pull the tent all the way down. You only need to get the tent that far down, then you can use the latch to pull the rest of it down. And that is the tent closed, all done. If I hit stop, one minute 51 to uh, pack up the tent. Obviously with us, with the air mattress, we have to deflate it, so it takes a little bit longer, but it is what it is. Pretty quick, pretty simple. That's packing up the Motop. All right, so let's talk about our thoughts on the Motop pros, cons, and then we'll talk about modifications, all right? Okay. So... Should we start outside to inside? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Yep, yep, let's go that way I can okay. have some logic in my brain. So, my first pro with the MoTop from the outside is its dimensions. Because it's only 16 centimeters tall, it reduced quite a bit of wind drag on the car, and it allowed me to park my car back in my carport at home. So that's a win. So the baby's back inside can again. can park inside again. Instead of parking on the back driveway outside. So, yeah. So my pro is to date, it has been totally dust free and water free. 
no dust has gotten in that tent and you will have seen that we've been taking some very dusty roads where we are not always the lead car and while you don't see this when we do our work for variety we are literally covered in dust even graham and i end up orange at the end of those trips yeah. because um we're driving in between all these different cars on gravel roads so far no dust has gotten inside which for me is fantastic having a clean bed to go back into each yeah. night so yeah motop has a nice big thick automotive seal all the way around the outside and when it's closed down it has been yep dust free and, waterproof yep. not like just great as it should be really <laughs> so yeah so that's definitely a massive pro <laughs> talking about waterproof we have used it in uh, a fair bit of rain we did our wildflowers trip with andrew fan at the end of last year and it rained on us the whole time and it was we got it before winter so yeah his first couple trips um were wet were, winter trips yeah. we didn't always film them because covid will camping in each other's back gardens yep. and stuff but yeah but completely waterproof uh when it's been set up uh so that's a, a win in in my regards uh you know again as you would expect you you want your tent to be waterproof it shouldn't be letting water in uh, Motop has not in and we've like I said we've been in some big downpours uh, and a lot of rain uh, it has not let any water in at all so that's a, quite a win yeah so that's a, a, another pro um, obviously you know based off the specifications alone uh, 57 kilos big pro it's quite a lot lighter than all the other aluminium tents out there that are in the 80 to 100 kilo weight range um, but its actual footprint, its width and length and whatnot is comparable comparable to them too. So you're not really losing out uh, in that regard. Uh, any other pros you can think of going around the outside? Importantly, gas struts on the outside. Yes. So I'm not sure who of you have had rooftops in the past, but when gas struts are on the inside and it's a cold night, you know about it. And they just take up so much internal dimensions. So. Yep. Yeah. And the people that say, oh, the gas struts on the outside get damaged and ripped off. One's behind the ensuite and the other one's behind the awning. Nothing is going to touch them or damage them. So I think that's a bit of a flawed logic in our case. But so. we haven't managed to rip them yet. I don't even think there's scratches on them. Nothing's going to get close to them. Otherwise, I'm going to be ripping a heap of other stuff off the roof rack first. Moving to the inside of the tent, what are our pros and cons? Do we have any cons on the outside of the tent, well, actually? I will go talk about cons separately, but okay. pros for the inside of the okay. tent. Okay, pros for inside. I've got one straight away. Go on. The mosquito netting is on the outside. Oh. And yes. the actual, like, hard Solid canvas can, door yeah. is on the inside. So you can have the canvas door partway zipped up, and if you're getting too hot, you can zip it down, or if you're getting too cold, you can zip it all the way up, and the mosquito netting is on the outside. So it's easy to adjust from the inside you're not having to open the mosquito netting adjust the outside canvas door then zip up the mosquito netting again so in my opinion that's a good design and well thought out and it is a pro um other pros for the inside well it's not really much inside so no, it's pretty basic it's, there's nothing inside we, really so we swapped the mattress yeah so. we'll get to that um yeah no just yeah lack of gas struts inside cool all right, so covered off all our pros. Yep. Lightweight, good size, quick and easy to set up, quick and easy to pack up. Dust free. Dust free, waterproof. Let's talk about yep. the cons. Yep. My first con uh, was to do with the outside and it was the latches. The latches required the tent to be fully closed. They weren't compression latches, so you couldn't, or over center latches, you couldn't hook it up and then pull it down you actually had to get the tent fully closed down to close the latch, which as soon as you put any bedding inside was very, very difficult to do. So the latches were a bad design. Credit to Motop, they've subsequently changed it to a new design, um, but with us having the second generation tent, we just went and fitted our own over center latches. And I'll talk about that in the mods. Next con um the mattress it has to be the mattress yeah it, the mattress was like sleeping on wood floor that is 
only way to describe it. The mattress is six centimeters thick, uh, six to seven. It's advertised as seven, but when we measured it, it was six. Um, and it is on the very firm side of firm. That's probably the best way to put it. It was not particularly comfortable. We could manage one, maybe two, at a stretch three nights. At a stretch of three, we were starting to hate each other a yeah. little. Um, and that was enough. And it actually took us sleeping in a really uncomfortable bed and going, oh, that bed's so uncomfortable. Then going camping immediately afterwards going, oh wow, the Motop's really uncomfortable to go, maybe we should look at changing the mattress. And so we have, and again, we'll touch on that in our mods. Another con for you. That with the Motop standard mattress provided, you cannot put anything else in that tent. Like it just will not fit anything because it is so slim. We could fit our sleeping bags. But that was a push. Like. And that was a tight push. It was hard to pack up the tent. That was someone on the roof of the tent sitting on the yep. tent to latch it. So what we then did was we kept our pillows inside the car in a net that suspended them against the head lining or the head, the, the roof lining yeah. of the car. Uh, so yeah, another con. Because the Pro is at 16 centimetres tall, the con is it gives is that you... Is it 16 centimetres tall? It's 16 centimetres tall and gives you no storage space yeah, inside for no bedding. there's no storage. Again, we'll touch on what we've done to fix that because now we can fit our sleeping bags, our blanket, our pillows, and a few other bits and pieces inside the tent. For me, the canvas is just a little bit thinner than all the others out there. So I'll get the specs, I'm pretty sure, off the top of my head. The canvas on the Motop is 240 GSM. Um, the canvas on the old King's rooftop tent was 290 or 300 GSM. So it's a little bit thinner than the King's canvas. Ali Cab Bush Company, they're like 350 to 400 GSM. So a little bit thicker again. Um, now, the only drawback with the thinner canvas is on the cold nights, it gets a little bit colder inside the tent. Like it's not as well sort of insulated. But on the warm nights, um, it's the opposite. It allows for more airflow and it's thinner and better heat um, dispersion. So double-edged sword there. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's interesting you say that because I actually like the thinner canvas. I also find it easier to pack up it's because it's more up. flexible and yep. uh, less rigid. So yep. it's interesting you say if it's a con for you because I see it as more of a uh, pro. So there's definitely pros to the thinner canvas and I agree it is easier to, to handle and pack up and it takes up less space, it weighs less. but I think if we were going to be camping in the snow, the thinner canvas would allow more cold in. But we don't have snow here. We're in WA. WA. The coldest we get to is like mid single figures, you know, four, five, six degrees. And we've camped in a few of those nights. And with the blanket and the sleeping bag, we've been warm enough. So not, not the end of the world if you're in a warmer climate area. In fact, it's probably a pro in a warmer climate area, really. About it. I mean, if you're wanting frills and spills like power points, fans, uh, lights, um, you might see it as a con that it doesn't come with any of that. But we have been able to modify to have all of those you things. You can retrofit so... all those things really easily and we'll show you those in our mods. Yep. So, any other cons with the tent? No, that's what I was going to touch on, just the basicness of inside yep. it. It's there's literally nothing there it's a basic tent but it's half the price of its oh i would say a con um the last con i do is the ceiling is still the aluminium which means when it's cold outside we're warm inside you get a lot of condensation on the roof which yep. occasionally does also drip down onto you which is a lovely way to wake up in the morning i haven't had that problem yet <laughs> um whether some of the more expensive upmarket rooftops that have actually carpet lined the roofs and that just helps insulate and stop that moisture coming through. Um, something I've sort of considered doing with this, but gone too much effort. A trick for other Motop owners, if you're watching this and in, in how we deal with the condensation, we actually have um, some like chamois style tea towels, quite absorbent. And we actually just wipe down the roof and the inside walls of the tent if we've got to do an, let's if we've got to do a quick pack up like if we're packing up and going 
and it's early in the morning and there's lots of condensation, we'll wipe down the inside of the tent, the walls and the roof with the tea towel and then we'll just hang that tea towel up in the car to dry and it's all good. If we're a bit more leisurely, then we we'll just, just let, let the sun hit the tent and dry out the condensation. And if it's still a bit damp inside, then we'll tea towel it. So yeah, that seems to work quite well for us, just using the tea towel to dry the condensation out. Yep. Um, so yeah, I think that covers off the pros and the cons and our thoughts on the basic MOTOP. Uh, now let's get into talking about what modifications and changes we've made to the MOTOP. All right, so what mods have we made to the MOTOP? I'll go first, I'll talk about the latches. Like I said before, the original latches required you to fully close the tent to close the latch. And we still use one of those latches on the side of the tent, I'll show it to you. But in order to make it easier to close the tent, we fitted some over center latches from Bunnings. I think they were like seven or $10 each. And all I had to do was drill a hole and adjust them to position them in the right place. They bolt into the rails, which again, that's a pro. The MOTOP has rails all the way around the side. You can bolt all sorts of stuff to it. Um, and now you don't need to get the tent fully closed down. You can get it partly closed down enough that you can get the latch on and then use the actual mechanism of the latches to close the tent. And then the only other thing we do just for a bit of additional security and stuff down this side of the tent, we use one of the MOTOP fold over latches, which we got with the tent and that just, we close down once we've closed the back latches. So next modification we've made. The mattress. Definitely worthwhile getting rid of the original mattress and fitting an upgraded one. We got the Zempire Monster Mat, which is a double self-inflating mattress. It is the lime green one if you've been looking at self-inflating mattresses. Grey mattress, lime green logos. Yep. It is fantastic. I love it more than my own bed at home right now. Yep. Like I said, we're now at 30 nights continuous on this trip and we'll be over 40 nights by the time we get home. Yep and we haven't had a bad night's sleep. We had one bad night's sleep. But that wasn't the mattress's fault. It was my fault, I didn't let enough air go into the yeah, mattress. Yeah, so quickly the specs on a mattress. It's 132 centimeters wide, it's two meters long. So it is like two centimeters thinner than the tent and it's about five centimeters shorter. So it is, I call it pretty much a perfect fit for the tent. Um, and it's 10 centimeters tall, fully inflated. So it is nice and plush and thick. Um, it has a very clever inflate and deflate valve. So it's the same valve for both. You just you spin just the dial, rotate it, and what it allows you is to deflate it, and then it, when you unroll it again, or when you take what we do is we use an air pump, um, it doesn't let it doesn't suck air back in. So it's 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 a it's a one way valve that you can reverse to inflate or deflate, and that is a very useful feature when it comes to packing up. Yep, so not only do we get the benefit of having a better mattress that we sleep on better, but then we get to deflate it each morning and keep all our bedding, keep our memory foam pillows, yep. our blankets, the works in the tent and still be able to shut the tent because the mattress has been deflated yep. to say two centimeters. Two or so thick. centimeters, yeah. Yep. So the original MOTOP six centimeters tall when it's packed up and it gave you about three centimeters above it for bedding. Now, because we've picked up that additional four centimeters when we deflate our mattress, we've got about seven centimeters inside the tent. Mattress Unfortunately, price. the mattress costs 300 bucks, uh, so it makes the tent- But it is worth it, it is a mattress. Yeah, it's a proper mattress, really. Like. And it is versatile, like if we were having guests come and stay at home, we could pull it out, put it on the floor, and give them the mattress to sleep on. If I stop liking our bed at home, I've got a mattress I like still. Yeah, so there's there's definitely pros to going down the self-inflating route. Yeah. Again, don't quote me on this, but I think on their newer or the latest generation MOTOPs, they do do self-inflating mattresses. I've had I've got no experience with them. My experience is with the Zempia mattress. The other thing is MOTOP now do a plus model, which is slightly taller. So I think it's 20 centimeters tall instead of 16. So it picks up another four centimeters inside for additional storage of bedding. 
So, but it wouldn't fit in your garage if... Correct. For us, means no garage. So consider that yep. for yourselves, whether you want the 16 or the 20 centimetre I mean, tall tent. The recommendation would always be buy it as is, take it camping. See what annoys you, see what doesn't. Yep. Like we went camping with the original setup quite a few times before we started doing these modifications. Yep. Um, it was actually really this big trip that's the big trip is what prompted, prompted us to change the mattress. Yeah. Um, the other stuff was little niggly bits. The other stuff we did as soon as we got the tent. The first thing I did uh, was put the solar panel on the roof and you can see that here. Yeah. Uh, it's 120 watt um, solar panel. I just made the crossbars and the brackets, the bolts into the rails. It's easy to remove, it's easy to reinstall. Yep. Um, Motop offer a solar panel if you want. But if you've already got your own solar panels from previous setups, that it's just as easy to bolt them onto the top of the tent. Um, the other modification I've made is at the back of the tent on the sides, I've installed some of that um, aluminium aircraft tracking with the adjustable tie down points. And that's now my uh, wood rack. So when we stop to collect firewood, and we've done it four or five times on this trip. Yeah, I think so. Um, I just use my electric chainsaw, chop up my firewood and stack it on top of the tent couple ratchet straps holds it down really well it doesn't move um, and that is on the sides of the tent not on the top so it's not losing your height clearances sort of thing yeah um, so yeah another good option for uh, you and then the other modification we did that I can think of is super expensive modification we bought two strips of velcro stuck velcro to the roof and the little cheapy one dollar battery powered battery LED light from bunnies. bunnies and we just they sit on the car shelves when we hop in the tent we just velcro yep. them on the roof and you've got light little his and her light so yep. we each have our own light we talked about also adding usb points but running power up to like a cigarette lighter and stuff up there but we actually just thought it was easier just to get a power bank charge it in the car and then take it upstairs with our phone cables and charge our phones off of it that way yeah. i mean at the end of the day we were finding it's a rooftop tent we go in there to sleep like we yeah. live outdoors yeah. we, when we go camping. If, if we want to sit down and relax, we'll sit down here yeah. and relax, not in our tent. And that was the thing. It was, do we run hard wiring up to the tent, in which case we had it to have another plug, something else to undo when we take the tent off. And mm -hmm. we have taken the tent off. We took it off when we went to Dirk Hartog. We took it off um, for a recent variety event um, to save on a bit of fuel and the top heaviness of the car. Yeah, we got accommodation on that one. That was lovely. So yeah. Um, and on our setup, because of the roof rack, I've just got some big aluminium pieces of flat plate about five or six mil thick. And it's just a big sandwich washer. It's four bolts that holds the tent on and it's proven itself to me to be a faultless way of putting it on it Just sandwiches the mesh for the roof rack. Yep. Actually, I thought of one more modification. Go on. We only did this modification mid trip. It's fresh. We got the bungee cords. Yeah. And corded it between the two hooks inside the tent, and we used that to hold our fan up, so we have a fan at yep. night. So, um, look, it'd be good to get like a little Sirocco caravanning fan because it's a bit more compact. And but we just again, have a giant Ryobi fan right yep, now. I've just got my Ryobi misting fan. It's not just a normal fan. It's a misting fan. So if it's a bit hot around camp, we can just mist ourselves with it. But then we can also just run it as a standard fan in the rooftop tent. And we just suspend it from the roof with some uh, bungee straps, some hockey straps. Yeah. We've done that two or three nights this trip. It's fantastic. When it's been like humid. really humid and uncomfortable. Uh, we've run the fan and it's made it so much more peaceful and comfortable to sleep. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was lovely. And that's about it for modifications. Mm -hmm. So our general thoughts and recommendations on the Motop. Would you buy another one if we had to? If we had the choice of this or another tent or whatever, would, would we buy another Motop? I wanted this the first time, but you said no. <laughs> yeah, look, I put my hand up. I didn't do my research properly. Graham didn't listen to me. And we tried couple other rooftop tents and came back to Motop. Yeah. Uh, yeah, hands down with, with without a question of the doubt, I would get another Motop. Um, like I said, we've got no connection with them. We bought this at full price out of our own money and no regrets. 
very happy with it. It's performed faultlessly. It does exactly what I would expect a rooftop tent in that price range to do. And that's it. there's not many tents that hit this price range when we were looking. Yep. Um, we can't justify the high price tents. Like, in the, ultimately, and you would have seen it, we did our last big trip with a camper trailer and we set it then in a couple of years time, once kids and whatnot come along, we're gonna need to get a camper trailer. Yeah. And at that point, whatever rooftop tent we have is gonna become a very expensive shed ornament. Yeah. It's gonna hang in the shed. It might come out once or twice a year for a variety event or a boys trip or who knows what, but really it's not gonna see the same amount of use that it sees now. So I didn't wanna get a $6,000 tent to use it for a couple of years and then hang it in the shed when I could get a $3,000 tent that does the same thing. But like, we have borrowed an alley cab before yep. today. We were very lucky to be able to borrow an alley cab for a trip. And in all honesty, like, you know, I loved that alley cab when we were borrowing it. But looking back now, I'm going, it's is the it, same thing. Is that? It, there's not twice the value in an alley cab that we have not got in this. Pretty much With hit the nail on the head. With our couple of tweaks, this to me is on par with an alley cab. Yep. And it fits in my garage, so... And an alley cab wouldn't. So this tent owes us three and a half grand. Tent, freight, mattress. Yeah. I'm not including the uh, cost... The, the latches or the $2 LED lights or the solar panel that I already had, right? Because that's just small fry stuff. Um, but yeah, the, the tent doesn't really owe us... It owes us three and a half grand. So we are comfortably 2,000 to two and a half grand ahead of most of the other high-end aluminium rooftop tents. So For what you get, Everyone's I, got different opinions, obviously. This is just our opinion. Correct. Um, if I could do it again with an unlimited budget, I'd probably still end up with this setup because it just ticks. It's got the compactness, the lightweightness that we're after. You put in a good mattress and I, I could sleep in there forever. Yep. We could have done an eggshell topper on this, but it would have meant no bedding inside the tent whatsoever um, because we tried it. Yep, and it sucks when it's raining and you've got to drag all your bedding in and out. Exactly. Drag your sleeping bags out, drag your pillows out whilst you're getting rained on to pack them in the car. And it gets back to when we very first got into our rooftop tent, into the King's rooftop tent. One of the big benefits was being able to keep the bedding inside the tent. Mm -hmm. Have it back in the car would be getting towards a bit of a deal breaker for us. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah. It's it's all about efficiency and ease. Like yep. when you're doing a hard day driving because you're trying to get somewhere in a hurry, such as the Kimberley, um, you don't want to be stuffing around with bedding and just yep. pain in the ass stuff. So yeah, that's our thoughts on the Motop. Price is right, specs are right, more pros than cons. And the couple cons are what we feel are fairly easy fixes. Uh, it's a great no frills yep. rooftop tent. Great to tweak and tinker with. For the budget it's, conscious. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I say the budget conscious. It's still expensive, but it's a lot cheaper than your other alternatives. Yeah. So, yeah. I hope you found the video useful. Like I said, our tent is 12 months old now. Um, they have revised it to a version 3 and I believe now a version 4 as well. So they have made some tweaks and refinements. I'd recommend, and I'm pretty sure you can do it just about anywhere in Australia, go down and actually check them out in person. And I'd recommend this for any rooftop tent that you're looking at buying. It's a big investment. Go down and actually check them out in person. Look at, uh, look at them and feel yeah. them and suss them out. See what if it's what you want. What we always do is we always ask if we can set them up and pack them up. And so far, everyone's been more than accommodating yep. with that because little shorty us here, um, I have a rule. I like to always be able to pack up the tent myself. Because if I can't pack it up myself, then there's no point having it because if Graham's doing something, yep. I can't pack up. So yeah, we always ask the showroom if we can pack it up. Practice setting, setting it up, it up. packing it up. Because that helps you learn if there's any niggly bits. Yeah, and we normally will also take our bedding like our sleeping bags with us and we'll see or how they fit in the tent yep. if the tent is too tight to close with them that sort of thing yep. we did it with a mo top and the, that's why we knew the sleeping bags fit but the pillows didn't yep. and why we could make that alternative plan and it's also why we were happy to to get it in a way yeah so yeah anyway 
I hope you found the review useful. If you've got any questions, comments, whatever, you want to know some more information, you've got a curly one, you think we might have missed something, drop them in the comments below and we will um, suss them out and give you an answer. And we'll see you in the next, blah, 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 blah. we'll see you in the next video, guys. Uh, happy, safe adventures. Stay safe on the tracks and trails. If we don't see you out there, we'll see you in the next video. And what did we forget? Like and subscribe. If you've enjoyed the video, give us a like and you can subscribe either here or here. It's been a while, I forgot which corner it's in. I think it's over here. And um, yeah, anyway guys, happy safe adventures. See you next time.